this is where I am now. We're at version YouTube 3. And this is what I had last time, version YouTube 2. So at first glance, it looks about the same. There's a lot of refinements to the details, actually. I got my travel where I want them. 8 inches on the Y, 12 inches on the X, and 10 inches on the Z. That 8 inches goes to here. It doesn't go all the way to the end of the linear ways. It stops an inch short here and an inch short on the back side also. So that will leave me room to put a bellows system. I might need more room than that. The overall size is now probably pretty close to where it will end up at. Here's a comparison. This is my tag and this is the one I'm designing now. It's in the ballpark of the same size. It's obviously a little bit bigger. One thing I, I really don't like about the Tag and most mills that I've seen is the steppers or servos hang off the sides and just take up so much space. And that's of course because they're directly coupled. I made a decision from the very beginning that I didn't want that. I have the servos mounted on the side and there will be a belt connecting them. So I did that for all three axes. Now I know there's probably some debate. Some people say uh, the belts aren't as accurate as a direct linkage. Now, of course it wouldn't be a direct linkage. There will still be a coupler. I've seen some expensive industrial machines that have a belt. I'm sure it will work out fine. The other thing I can do is have a belt reduction. If I don't need the system to go that fast, I could put a smaller pulley here and a larger pulley here and get more torque. This is YouTube 2 version now. These trucks here for the Y, when you mount them to the saddle, you have to be able to access those screws so you can square up motion of the X with the motion of the Y. Usually those screws are put in from above and screw into the truck. Some YouTube videos I saw, the X rail was in the way of the screw. It was a, an oversight and they brought it to the attention in their video. I made sure not to do that. The screw going into this truck would be obscured by this rail. So the way around that here is, here's the rail and here's the truck. And the screws would be on either side of the rail going into the truck. I would be able to assemble the whole system and square it and have access to those screws from above. Another thing I changed significantly was the construction of each axis. I was thinking of how to make this system accurate with the tools I have. But here's what I sketched up. This is the table and this is the saddle. Let's look at the table first because it's simpler. The top of the table would be aluminum. One possibility is a mic 6 fixture plate, which is very, very flat and stable. I drew this in metric, so it'll be 25 millimeters. If I buy one inch, it won't matter. It'll be 25.4 mil. So the top layer would be aluminum. There will be a small aluminum piece on the four corners and the trucks would screw into that. Everything here is that mic 6, so this top piece screwed to this piece, because they're both mic 6, the overall thickness will be 2 inches exactly, and the, the top of this to the bottom of that mount would be very, very parallel and flat, probably much more than I could do even on a bridge port. In between all that gap would be filled with epoxy granite. I'd have the strength of the aluminum and the damping of the epoxy granite, and I'd have the dimensional accuracy and parallelism of the aluminum to mount the trucks to. That's the overall plan I'm going to take. And here's the same thing on the saddle. All the shaded stuff is epoxy granite and all the solid lines are aluminum. And I'll show you what that looks like in the CAD. So again, this is the aluminum piece. And these are four aluminum corners. And then the trucks. This would be the ball nut mount. The overall thickness would be 50 millimeters or two inches if I use one inch plate. Looking at this, do I want four corner pieces or they're kind of close together? Should I just extend this piece into this piece and make it one going across or this piece and this piece and make it one going across this way? Or should I make these corner pieces only slightly bigger than the truck? Here they only over overhang the truck by uh, two millimeters on this side, so I could do the same thing there. The reason I actually ran into the edge here is to have, have a place to mount things later on if I want to on the table. You could say, well, why not just make the whole thing aluminum? One advantage of this is I have the epoxy granite for the damping and to make the system lighter weight. Also, these small blocks, I could write a CNC program and make them on my TAG and use dowel pins to assemble them to this. So I can make this whole system on my TAG and assemble it, and I'll probably be pretty close. That's what the table looks like. Another possibility is if I don't use mic 6 plate, I can just use regular 6061 aluminum and do the same thing, and then take it to my bridge board. Let's say the table is a screen, so clamp it to the table, and then do a facing cut on these four faces and then flip it and now put those four faces down on a table and then do a facing cut on this. 
uh, and that will get me parallel within the accuracy of my bridge port. And of course, put all the mounting holes in and such. So that's the table. Now if I look at the Z, the Z is smaller than the table, but there's even less room for the epoxy granite. This one in particular begs the question, do I make these mounts go all the way across and connect? Or do I make the whole thing aluminum and eliminate the epoxy granite completely? It can go either way. The saddle, let me show you the saddle. So the saddle is the most complicated one. Here's the aluminum pieces. Here's the ways. And the dark piece is the epoxy granite. And because the saddle is really long, if I want to do a bolt together construction without a bridge port, then I want this to be flat all the way across and parallel to this side as close as I can get it. What I ended up doing for this one is making the middle plate one continuous piece to help tie everything together instead of four individual pieces for the trucks. And here's for the nut. And then at the end, I have this piece and this piece, which are aluminum. And what they do is they give two inch thick mounting surface for the plate that will go here that's not designed yet that will attach the servo to the saddle. So again, if I use the bridge port on this, this is probably a moot point, and I can use cheaper 6061 aluminum. Cast this all up, and then put this surface on the bridge port. It will be like this. Face this entire surface, face this entire surface, and this entire surface in one pass. Then drill all the holes for these, then flip it, and face this surface and this surface and drill all the holes for the linear ways and also face uh, this surface and this surface. This here is epoxy granite. The servos I have in are JMC IHSV57 servos. They're 100 watt versions. I already have them and they work pretty well on bench testing and they have a more powerful version that's 140 watts and another one that's 180 watts and they're the same size except they're a little bit longer so the 180 watt one might come out to about here. It would still fit. From what I've seen of these on my TIG, I think the 100 watt version will be plenty powerful enough for what I'd be doing with it. Plus, I'm pretty sure I'd have a small belt reduction here, so the low end torque would be pretty good. So that's where I am now. I really have to make a decision how I'm going to assemble this in order to figure out what I'm going to do with these plates on all three axes. That's the update for this week. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.